Okay, the first is called general form. Okay, so the text that we're using calls this general form. Sometimes a text will call this standard form. Okay, but for the sake of this, I will tend to refer to this, or I will try to, because I've in the past called it standard as well, but I will try to uh, refer to this as general form. Okay, and it's just the basic form of a quadratic function. Okay, where a, b, and c are your uh, coefficients for each of those uh, consecutive terms. All right, so based on just the way that the equation is written, there's certain information that you can sort of take away from the quadratic function. Okay, the first is the leading coefficient, a. So for no matter what form it's written in, a your leading co is going to be your leading coefficient. And if A is a positive number, then your graph is going to open up. If A is a negative number, then your graph is going to open down. Okay, so again, something to keep in mind, it doesn't matter what form, there will always be a leading coefficient designated with A or by A uh, in the front of it. Okay, depending on what form you're given, the vertex is going to be uh, distinguished in uh, a different way. Okay, so if you have this general form, the way that you find your vertex is you can identify the x-coordinate of your vertex using <coughs> negative b over 2a. It's a part of the quadratic formula. Okay, if you take that first term, uh, separate it or distribute the denominator into it, but take that first term away from the plus or minus part, uh, that is your vertex or the x-coordinate of your vertex. And then the y-coordinate of your vertex can be found by taking your function and plugging in whatever you get for your x-coordinate into your function. And so the way that I'm expressing that is this. Is there any question of what I mean by f of negative b over 2a? Okay, you're going to take your f function, substitute in whatever you get for the x-coordinate of your vertex, and evaluate. And that's what goes into the y of your vertex. Now, because we know that the symmetry exists at a vertical line through the x-axis or the x-coordinate of your vertex, the symmetry for this is going to be an axis of symmetry at x equals whatever the x-coordinate was, which we found in this form to be b over t negative b over 2a. So this is the equation for the line of symmetry for the parabola. And then finally, to solve for the zeros, uh, in if you're given general form, uh, what you're going to do is uh, you can use your calculators and the solve feature to set them equal to zero. So if you took your uh, equation, set it equal to zero and solve for x, you're going to get your uh, x coordinates of the zeros. And so if you see here, I have that whole part, this whole thing, gives you uh, your x coordinates and then comma zero is going to be the way to uh, find the rest of that. Okay, but you can also, because uh, this general form uh, is what you can use for quadratic formula as well, uh, if you set that equal to zero, you could have also identified the x coordinates of your zeros by using quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Those will give you your x coordinates and then comma zero because your y coordinate is going to be zero for those uh, x intercepts or zeros. Okay, so remember this is also, these are your x intercepts. Okay, the zeros are your x intercepts. Okay, and then the final uh, thing that you can also find here uh, pretty easily is your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is going to be uh, the ordered pair when x is 0. And the reason this is easy to find in general form is if x is 0, these first two terms uh, remain 0. So your coordinate is just going to be, or your uh, y-coordinate is just going to be the c value, whatever your constant is. Okay. 